Hello, friend. Welcome to Grandpa's Horror Stories. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment your own stories. Experience the allure of spine-tingling stories. Hats off to the Reddit authors. Credits below. My wife made a scavenger hunt for me. I wish I'd never completed it. I rolled from bed and shuffle like a zombie across the hardwood floors of the hallway and into the kitchen. The aroma of coffee washed over me in a wave. I eagerly poured a cup of black gold and added some pumpkin creamer. It tasted like heaven on my lips. It wasn't until after my second cup and three fried eggs later that I discovered the note on the counter. My wife's flawless handwriting was eloquently scribbled on a torn notebook page lying next to the paper towel dispenser. John, enjoy your bachelor weekend at home. I'll miss you very much. But before you break into the beer and call your friends, can you please take care of these things for me? Much love, Evie. I sighed expecting a bulleted list of errands, but when I flipped over the note it wasn't that at all. Scavenger Hunt was written in large bold letters at the top of the page. Evelyn, you magnificent woman. I chuckled. She knew I was an absolute fool for puzzles and games. I loved them, couldn't get enough of them. She had been hesitant to go on a girl's trip for the weekend. I think she felt guilty leaving me alone and also for spending the money. We had plenty of it, but she grew up poor and it made her very frugal. I'd pushed her along and eventually talked her into going. She worked hard and needed the break, plus I really didn't mind. This was probably her way of feeling better about the decision, leaving me some joy while she was on vacation. The note read, Take the cell phone in the junk drawer. The passcode is 3808. A series of emails will be set on a timed schedule for how long I think it will take for you to complete each item. So don't dally John P. Tess. There's a present at the end. A heart was drawn next to my name. I opened the junk drawer in the kitchen. An iPhone with a palm tree wallpaper suddenly buzzed with an email notification. Woo, I whispered. She really stepped it up on this one. I swiped at the notification and punched in the passcode as instructed. There was only one email from an email address I didn't recognize. I opened it to where we had our first meet. Your first clue is under the seat. Easy. Bentino's Italian restaurant. We'd first started talking on a dating app and then agreed to meet the first time over linguine. It was her favorite dish. I quickly threw on my joggers and denim jacket and hit the door. After a 10-minute drive across town, I parked at the Swanky Eatery. A cobblestone path led to a stucco building that overlooked the bay. Rose vines climbed trellises next to large stained glass windows. The lot was packed. They'd only just opened for lunch, and it was already bustling with patrons. I told the hostess my party was already inside, and she waved me through to the dining room. I racked my brain, trying to remember exactly where we had sat, but there was no way to recall. Exactly. It was for years ago, after all. So I made a fool of myself looking under half the tables in the restaurant. I wasn't so discreet about it either. How could you be? I made up a story that I had gotten spaghetti sauce on my hand and taken off my wedding ring to clean. It and it must have fallen and rolled away. People were more than happy to let me check, feigning concern for my misfortune. But it wasn't until about table number 15 where I saw it. It was a thick piece of chrome duct tape 
on the underside of a table near the bar. I carefully peeled it back to reveal a car key. I froed my brow in confusion, but quickly stuffed it into my pocket. I slipped my ring out of my sleeve and held it up high, announcing to the diners and curious waitstaff that I'd found it. They were even kind enough to applaud. As quick as I could without running, I rushed out of the building. My face was hot with excitement and embarrassment. It was a key key. How strange. I looked around the parking lot, but there were several KIAS. I decided to press the alarm button and a white SUV began to hunk noisily. After hitting the unlock button to silence it, I heard a ding in my pocket from the cell phone. It was another email. I fumbled to open it, nearly dropping the phone. Take the rental car I got for you to a place where church and state lose their separation, a place where vows were said after much preparation. Your next clue will be under a bench, but the hike won't be a cinch, a place where church and state lose their separation. I scratched at the stubble on my chin. Ah, the courthouse on Maine, the church being the wedding portion of the riddle that occurred in a state building. That had to be it. We had decided to have a small courthouse wedding with only a few friends as witnesses because we wanted to spend our wedding budget on a lavish honeymoon in the Caribbean. It had definitely been the right call. Her riddles weren't very difficult to solve but I was blown away by the mystery phone and rental car. She was really going all out. I made a mental note to prepare something sweet for her like this, something with some real thought behind it. I got into the SUV and was smacked in the face by the smell of cleaner and nearly gagged. It was like tropical pineapple mixed with bleach. It seemed the rental company went a little overboard with the detailing, but it was a nice car. I made my way over to Main Street with the windows down and parked in front of the courthouse. It was a small shanty building in comparison to the multi-story office buildings that shouldered it. After making my way through the double doors, I began looking under the benches that lined the hall adjacent to the courtroom. I could vaguely hear a proceeding taking place on the other side of the wall, but it came through muffled and mumbled. It took longer than it should have because every time someone would come down the passageway I had to sit on the bench and look unsuspicious, pretending to read something on my phone. But eventually I found the right one. There was a map taped on the underside of the bench among the clusters of dried gum, one of Briarwood National Park, which was about half an hour north of town. I'd been there before, but not in ages. There was a route highlighted in red with an X maybe a couple miles around the outskirts of the park. Looks like you still stayed pretty close to the road the whole time. I'm betting she did that because she knew I had a terrible sense of direction and didn't want me to get lost. I grinned and tucked the map in my back pocket. Another email came through as I got back into the rental. A little fresh air and you're almost there. Make sure you bring a shovel. Your present will exceed your expectations by at least double. That made me laugh. I was going to have to give her a hard time about her rhymes when she got home. They were clever, but incredibly silly. On my way upstate, I stopped at a rinky-dink hardware store and picked up a shovel. The cashier had jested that it was a little late in the season for gardening, but I had told him the wife had me doing some light landscaping and he hit me with the happy wife happy life routine. I didn't disagree. I admired the evergreens, 
and mighty pine trees as I twisted through the mountain sigh. It had been too long since I'd left the city. Evelyn had always talked about getting a second home in the country, one we could escape to on long weekends. Maybe she was onto something there, but how long had she been planning this? When had she had time to come up to the park and bury something for me to find, and to think it wasn't even my birthday. I parked in a small lot at the entrance of the park. There was a crisp chill to the air, but the sun was plenty warm. I took a deep breath of fresh air and exaggerated my exhale mightily. I carried the shovel like a prized trophy as I hiked along the footpath that shouldered a side road. There wasn't much traffic, but every few minutes I could hear a car whiz by through the trees. It was beautiful and just what I needed. 4. The past month I had been drowning in bank statements, invoices, and tax forms. I worked at an accounting firm, and we were trying to wrap up our fourth quarter financials. Needless to say, it had been a stressful road to the upcoming holidays. Thank you, Evie, I thought as I periodically stopped to pick up walnuts and chuck them through the underbrush. After about half an hour of a pleasant stroll, I reached where the map said I needed to be. I scanned the area, kicking through orange and yellow leaves and overturning branches that had fallen from above until I found a large patch of disturbed earth it looked like something had recently been buried here. I thought about playing my workout playlist as I dug but decided to enjoy the silence of nature instead. After about another half hour of digging, I hit something that felt solid. Man, she really buried this deep. Despite the fall temperatures, I was soaked in sweat. After brushing away some soil, I discovered that it was a large duffel bag, maybe five feet long. I continued to quickly claw away dirt and mud to free it completely and grab the strap and gave it a heave. God, it was heavy. Had to be over a hundred pounds. After a struggle, I got it up on level ground. Breathing heavily, I pulled the zipper down halfway. Blonde hair and an arm sprung out from the opening. Jesus Christ, I scream, falling backward and scooting away from the bag frantically on all fours. What the fuck? It was a body. The sun glinted off hot pink nail polish where the arm jutted out at an odd angle, like it had to have been broken to fit in the bag. I heaved up the contents of my stomach in some nearby brush before slowly approaching the duffel once more. A face stared back up at me. But not just any face, oh God, Sam. It was Samantha, Peachy, a woman I worked with, a woman I had been sleeping with. There was a jag cut across her throat where worms wriggled among the meat. The cut was so deep that her neck bone. Glisten like ivory. I ran my fingers through my hair, pulling at it as I sobbed. A scream gurgled up in my throat as I gazed into her dead, dull eyes, but then it was silenced by a notification on the phone from Evie. I brought a shaky hand to my mouth as I read it. My heart did tear. Once I discovered your affair, now you'll both pay You'd better run. The police are on their way. P.S. Your DNA is on everything. Her car, her phone, and probably still inside her. Goodbye, John. Sirens began to wail in the distance uh, as I finally understood it hadn't been a scavenger hunt at all. I was being framed. P.S. There's a present at the end.